Thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, I will discuss the problem of explanation in mathematics, and uh, it's a quite different problem from, uh, from that one discussed before. Uh, the problem of explanation in natural science, in, in physics, in biology. I think that in natural science uh, there are many classical accounts of explanation and uh, that problem is quite extensively discussed. But I would say that within mathematics and, and philosophy of mathematics, this is a problem which is to a certain extent uh, neglected. I think the problem of explanation in mathematics is uh, a problem which is quite often discussed by mathematicians themselves. And uh, there are many uh, loose and vague terms they use in discussions, but it has not been paid uh, enough attention. It's trying to help, but I don't need any help. These notions which are quite often used and observed in, in the informal discussions are, for example, uh, the problem of uh, the importance of a theorem. Mathematicians, of course, say that uh, th theorem is, is important, is central, is deep, that some result is, uh, is a deep result, that a proof is, well, in a sense, a deep proof, not a tricky proof, but fundamental proof, whatever that means. Uh, they discuss the problem of, for example, the naturalness of some notions in mathematics or of some definitions in, in mathematics. Well, we can meet opinions that, well, this is a quite natural notion or, on the contrary, this notion seems somehow artificial and uh, does not have enough justification. But, or, for example, the coherence of a theory, not, of course, in the formal sense of being consistent, of being uh, consistent, because this is quite a natural necessary condition for a mathematical theory to be interesting, but a coherence in a loose conceptual sense. And these notions are notions which are, I think, discussed by mathematicians themselves, and a mathematician understands perfectly well what does it mean that the proof is deep or that the result is deep, but uh, philosophers of mathematics don't, I would say. And well, the question is why is this so? I don't, oops. Uh, and I hope that the discussion will clear that subject because I won't provide an answer, of course. Uh, we have heard about mathematical or quasi-mathematical explanations of biolog bi biological facts, and I think there are many uh, explanations, for example, of physical facts we would classify as, mathematician, uh, as, as mat <coughs> mathematical explanations. For example, why has this stone fallen down because a certain equation has such and such solution or a uh, differential equation is unstable or the, the, the phase space of some process is such and such. These are mathematical explanations of physical facts, but uh, I will talk about explanations within mathematics uh, itself, about <coughs> intramathematical explanation. And the question, the first question to address, what could perhaps the uh, object of explanation be when we discuss the problem of ma explanation within mathematics. What is to be explained? What is to be explained by what? What are the explanandum and explanants and, and so on? Uh, well, let's consider a possible uh, strategy which is quite often used in philosophy in general and the strategy is to, to dismiss the problem as a kind of a shine problem. This is not a genuine problem. This is a, a psychological problem. This is just a question of some, well, psychology of scientific invention and explanation would be considered to be just a purely psychological phenomenon. <clears throat> well, of course, it's very interesting from the point of view of psychology to to explain what explanation means and what understanding means and so on. But I don't think that this is a purely psychological problem. I think that this is a philosophical problem, but, but there's not a, a satisfactory uh, answer to that problem. Uh, <clears throat> within this strategy, we could 
perhaps claim that explaining is just providing the mathematician with a heartwarming feeling of, of understanding, of subjective com comfort. Yes? That to explain is to make a mathematician feel that he really understands the subject and knows what is going on just from purely psychological point of view. But, so this would be the feeling of understanding, but this is not an explanation of a philosophical problem. So let us consider some, some uh, specific problems. What, what could it mean to explain the fact that, well, for example, a very elementary <laughs> one of the first results in uh, number theory we learn at school, that there are infinitely many prime numbers. So what, what does it mean to explain this fact? Of course, we could say, well, to explain in mathematics, and this is one possible general strategy, to explain in mathematics is nothing more than just to provide a proof. And this is the answer. And that's all about explanation in mathematics that could reasonably be stated. And to explain that there are infinitely many prime numbers means simply just to write down a proof. It's very simple. And this explains all. What does it mean to explain that a certain equation has no solution? or that a certain fact from, say, differential geometry obtains in one dimension only, for example, about four-dimensional manifolds or 15-dimensional manifolds, whatever. But what does it mean to explain the fact that, for example, the continuum hypothesis is independent from, from the zermelo frankel set theory? Well, of course, we could answer the explanation is very simple. It, simply means that this is a weak theory and this is a statement which cannot be formally decided within the theory and that's all. This is the explanation and we don't need any, uh, any other answers. But, well, I don't think that this explanation, uh, that this uh, answer really explains what is going on. A mathematician would perhaps expect, or a philosopher, that there are some deeper reasons for these facts. What does it mean that a theorem is not provable in one certain theory, but it is provable in another? And again, one quite trivial answer is, well, this theory is weak, this theory is strong, and that's all. And we don't need uh, to look for any other explanations of these facts. What does it mean to explain that, for example, Fermat's theorem is true? Well, in all these cases, we could perhaps pursue the strategy of just giving a formal proof or giving a proof and that this would explain everything but well I don't think that this would be a satisfactory answer. What could explaining in mathematics mean? Maybe to provide motivation in some general and maybe vague and, and loose sense. is to provide motivation to uh, well to invent a new concept, or to prove a theorem, or to formulate a hypothesis, or to invent a new theory, and so on. Maybe to, well, to put a fact within a broad context. We, we have some <coughs> result, we have some theorem, we don't really understand what is going on and why really this theorem is true, but we say, well, this is just an expression of a certain deeper fact, and this is the explanation why this certain fact obtains. Well, maybe just to show that this is a special case of some general um, phenomenon. Maybe to put some order into the conceptual field. Not in the formal sense of a formal theory, of course, because this is not what we expect from explaining, I think, in, in mathematics. And, of course, there are there can be many other possible answers. Maybe to explain is just to answer a certain why question. This is one of the accounts in the theory of explanation. To explain is to answer a, a why question. But uh, if we consider some questions from the mathematical practice, often these questions are like these. The mathematician asks, why is this proof really okay? It's not about, is this uh, proof formally correct? Because, well, we, we check that this proof is formally correct, but we don't really know what is 
going on, so to say. <coughs> Why is this really so? Why must this certain notion be defined in this certain way? And this is, the, so to say, the, the canonical way of defining a certain notion, the only one that works, the only one which is <coughs> fertile, and so on. <coughs> Why will this method not work? And so on, and so on. What's the deep reason for these facts? Uh, I think this is quite familiar to, to, to all mathematicians, that they have sometimes the feeling that, well, they have some art of, of intuition, of feeling that th this problem cannot be solved in such a way, but perhaps another method will prove effective. And they cannot uh, justify their feeling by giving a formal proof, because it still doesn't exist. They just have the feeling that from their understanding of the whole situation, <coughs> from their understanding of the whole situation, uh, they have several convictions about, <coughs> about these problems. Some examples, maybe, of uh, explaining certain phenomena. But I'm not quite sure whether these uh, facts could be called real explanations in mathematics. We could, for example, say that complex numbers explain, in a sense, the applicability of the imaginary unit, which from a certain point of view <laughs> was illegal, but after formulating a certain mathematical theory, we can say, okay, this is, this is uh, just a piece of mathematics. For example, Galois theory explains certain constructions. The theory of distributions explains the, <coughs> the Dirac delta function, the, the Dirac delta not function <laughs> to be exact. Uh, Non-standard analysis explains the intuitions behind the notions of uh, infinitesimal uh, numbers or infinitesimals. But in all these cases, uh, <coughs> the mechanism is quite similar. We have some uh, vague, not formally defined notion, the imaginary unit, uh, Dirac delta not function, uh, the infinitesimals. And here we have their formal counterparts. So from this point of view, explaining would just mean to formalize. But I don't think that this is, this is a correct account. Just a historical uh, example of uh, Pringsheim, who in 1925, I think, not, don't remember, gave an account of complex analysis uh, where the basic notion was the notion of the mean value of a function. It was not one of the three classical accounts, Cauchy-Riemann equation and so on, but it was a different account. Of course, the results were the same. It's not a different complex analysis, but he claimed that uh, starting from his uh, basic notions, he can explain what is really going on in, in complex analysis. So that some of the results which uh, look quite strange, unexpected, maybe even bizarre from, from the intuitive point of view. In his account, uh, he claimed at least, they are quite natural and they can be explained in a natural way. So this was an, uh, an example of reformulating uh, already ready, so to say, already given theory in other terms in order to provide an explanation. <coughs> now the question which was already formulated in a, in a loose way before, well the explanation is a kind of a relation between the explanandum and the explanand. So what are they? So <coughs> will we claim that mathematical facts are explained by other facts that to provide an explanation uh, uh, an explanand for a fact is to show another fact which explains that, maybe by theories, maybe by proofs, or maybe theories are explained by some fundamental theorems, or maybe theories are explained by other theories, or maybe definitions are explained by theorems, or maybe facts are explained by pictures. 
sometimes we use pictures in mathematics just to provide, to give an understanding of a certain phenomenon. Maybe this is also a kind of explanation, maybe not, but the question is <coughs> which one of these, maybe all, are the description of the problem which is to be discussed. Maybe facts are explained, maybe the theorems are explained by theories, or maybe it's the other way around. <coughs> <coughs> now, a few words about the role of proofs, because I have already said that one possible strategy is to claim that explaining means just writing down a proof and that's all. So if you write down a proof of a mathematical fact, this is the whole explanation we can ever have. But I think that uh, the distinction between proofs that are explanatory and are not explanatory, which in a sense force the agreement, we just follow a proof and say, well, yes, this proof is okay and the result is as expected, but we don't have any understanding of the, so of the underlying mechanism. We just follow uh, some uh, formal transformations, maybe not purely formal, but at least there are some tricks which we uh, understand, so to say, in, as isolated events, but we don't understand the whole idea of the proof. We don't have any understanding. And notions uh, which I think are quite, well, vague, but on the other hand, I think that mathematicians use these notions that a proof is tricky. Is it just a tricky proof? It's not an interesting, deep, genuine proof. No. It works, but we don't know why it works. It's purely formal. And on the other hand, this proof reveals the deep structure of the whole problem, of the whole conceptual field. Or this proof expresses some deeper facts. So I think that the Mm, a distinction between a tricky proof or non-explanatory proof and an explanatory proof is something which is quite important for philosophy of mathematics. Uh, so we could think <coughs> of a tricky proof about, as, as, um, about a sequence of, of some admissible transitions, which as I've already said, are uh, acceptable as isolated events, so to say, but we don't know really what is going on, why is the proof developing, so to say, in this way. And on the other hand, we could think of proofs which can be, well, to, to quote Descartes, to survey an argument in one sweep of thought which gives us the understanding of the whole structure of the, of the conceptual machinery, so to say. Maybe this classification is just a purely subjective one. So maybe some proof can be explanatory for an expert and tricky for a non-specialist because a non-specialist only can see a sequence of transitions and a specialist can understand the general idea, so to say. But I don't think that this is a, a satisfactory answer because even specialists sometimes can claim that, well, this proof is just a certain tricky argument, not something deep. Just think for a short moment about computer-assisted proofs. From one point of view, we could claim that these proofs do not really provide uh, any understanding because, well, what? because uh, these proofs are just purely formal manipulations which occur in a computer, manipulations with certain strings of symbols, and they cannot give any real understanding. Well, on the other hand, of course, the, the, the classical well-known proof of the, the four-color theorem, it's not just a purely formal proof. There's a lot of deep mathematics within it, and we could claim that what the computer really does is not, uh, well, it's not really proving the theorem. It's about just uh, making some calculations easier. So this would be a possible answer. But, well, 
just imagine if we had a, a very, very, very quick supercomputer which could produce formal proofs of several theorems, which could solve open problems and just answer, yes, Riemann's hypothesis is true. But the proof is too long to communicate. I think nobody would say that this gives us any understanding of the subject. Even if we believe the computer that Riemann's hypothesis really is true and there is a formal proof from the axioms of, for example, Sermelo Frankel set theory, and this proof is very, very long, and we know its length and so on, I don't think that anyone would be satisfied with, it, with this answer. And even if we surveyed that formal proof, no specialist would be happy. Uh, well, differential geometer would say, well, this is a proof in some artificial formal system, which the logicians are so fond of, but it's not my subject. I'm interested in complex numbers and not in some formal uh, systems which are investigated within the foundations of mathematics. So I don't think that such a supercomputer proof would be in any sense explaining anything. Of course, the relation between formal and non-formal proof, proofs uh, in mathematics this is one of, I think, deep philosophical problems. We can think of the well, so-called uh, Hilbert's bridge, so, which is a kind of, of a postulate that any mathematical proof, any genuine mathematical proof, can in principle be formalized. I think that most or maybe all mathematicians, at least those who are interested in the problem of formalizing proofs, believe that any mathematical proof can really be formalized within some formal system. But of course, even if we believe that, we only have some uh, inductive accounts, inductive justifications of this fact. 500 proofs have been formalized, or maybe 5,000 proofs have been formalized, and we believe that this is a general phenomenon in mathematics. <clears throat> Just consider the following, well, explanation, or maybe it's not an explanation, that a theorem obtains because it follows from the accepted axiom. So that is the explanation in the manner of <clears throat> explaining means writing down a formal proof. I don't think that anyone would be really convinced that a certain fact about, for example, I'll say differential geometry, is true because it follows from some axioms of a basic mathematical, of, of, of a fundamental mathematical theory. For example, that a geometrical fact is true because it follows from the axioms of, for example, set theory, or maybe a kind of second order arithmetic or whatever. And I don't think that we could accept this as an explanation. It's true because of the laws of logic. So these explanations I, would, I wouldn't consider uh, satisfactory. Now a few words about the relation between explanation and uh, axiomatization in, in mathematics. Maybe we could claim that giving formal axioms and formalizing and axiomatizing a theory explains what is going on in the preformal period of uh, mathematics. For example, piano arithmetics explains what was going on in number theory before. I don't think that this is true. and I don't think that number theorists are considering piano arithmetic as something which explains what was going on in the 18th century, for example. Or that formalizing set theory explains what was going on in in the uh, pre-formal era, so to say. So I don't think that formalizing would, uh, is a good candidate for explanation. In the manner of Lakatos, we could reverse the direction and just say that it's the other way around. 
the informal practice gives an explanation or a justification of the formal counterpart of the theories. So these are quite different accounts. I don't know whether any of them is the right one. Another idea, one of the last to discuss, is uh, explanation as unification. I think that this is a quite intriguing idea because to unify a subject, to put, to put it into one coherent field where the number of, so to say, atomic components, which are treated as given, is reduced to a minimum, it's quite uh, appealing, I think. We don't have 500, 500 basic notions, we just have three basic notions, or one. And we don't have 5,000 axioms, only 12 axioms. Uh, we have less elementary primitive notions, we have less assumptions, etc. So from this point of view, to explain would be to reduce to a certain simple conceptual system. But I don't think that formalizing mathematics within, for example, Zermelo Frankel set theory would count as an explanation for a whatever specialist in probability theory or differential geometry or complex analysis or differential equations. That he says, well, I don't understand what's going on in my field. And we say, don't worry, there's the formalization in Sermelo Frankel's set theory. And he says, well, okay, now I'm happy I know what's going on in differential topology. Of course, it would be very, very artificial. And the last slide, some problems to discuss. One is, could there be mathematical, phenomenon, uh, mathematical phenomena without explanation? We just say, well, this is just as it is. We don't need to explain the fact this is, this is as it is. Point. Can the notion of explanation be formalized? Maybe, maybe still it is a purely psychological phenomenon and we shouldn't discuss it in a, a <laughs> philosophy seminar. Or maybe to consider to be explained means simply to get used to. Thank you very much. Thank you.